Hey guys, welcome here to our next tutorial. And before I jump into it, I want to say a huge thank you to Curtis here. He is actually the sponsor of this cool looking cat model here. You can see in the background, I'm working currently on it on a personal project. You will see that in a bit as it's close to finish soon. So really shoot out to him, check out his art station profile. He is actually crazy into dragons. So these are really next level creatures here he's doing. So really check it out. All right, here we are in Maya, but this works with every render engine. Doesn't matter if it's RenderMan or if it's Redshift, whatever. As long as you have a layer node where you can layer maps, and I think it's a pretty basic node, so every render engine should have that. And if it doesn't have that, then yeah, <laughs> skip that render engine. All right, so here's super basic setup, just that we can see something here in their IPR view, and let's dive into it. So what I have here is, Here's just a displacement map that I've exported from ZBrush. And what you can see here, let me turn it off here quickly. So this is, okay, yeah, it looks crappy. This is how the model actually looks like without any displacement. As you can see, it's pretty low res. And there is a high res model in ZBrush and I've exported the details out as high, um, high details and brought in here the actual details as displacement maps. And this is just midpoint of 0 0.5 and you have it here in the input input 1. So just uh, just our color, but it actually also would work just the red color and then here in the red color. So the next is, I have painted in Mari myself a second displacement map for even more smaller details. I got some nice textures from the Texturing XYZ website with some really high detail, detailed skin textures and they're channel packed. And I did another tutorial about that for the CG Launch Discord server so you can find it by uh, searching that on YouTube. You will see there a tutorial how you channel pack these textures and how you're using them inside of Mari to paint them. But this tutorial is really just about the shading part. But I can show you um, what it looks like. So here we have, oh, this is actually the wrong one. I'm an idiot. Look, one time of professionals, right? So that's what I wanted to show you guys. So you can see here, it's a pretty funky looking displacement map. So it's actually a bit colored. That's why I said it's um, some, it's kind of three displacement maps. We have a displacement map in the red channel. We have a second displacement map in the green channel and in the blue, a third one. And we're channel packing them just to merge them here again together. All right, let's bring this here back. Oh, come on, I hate this fucking one note graph. Me, not sure if you hear that. Uh, so there's a car, maybe there's some trouble outside, don't know. All right, so here we have the layer node and let's enable the first, the first layer here. Per default, it's on over, I guess, and the default is one. So let's see. Um, yeah, nothing happens because it's the wrong, it's the wrong um, blend mode. So if you have a zero, zero value of, of, of midpoint, then you want to use the plus or add function, but we have it here as a midpoint of, of zero to five. So we want to use overlay and looks gorgeous. Really cool, nice. Looks almost like, like like some stone. Do you notice these small tiny stones that are so, so, such plates? I have no idea how they're going in English, sorry. Uh, okay, so now comes the strength of, of, of this technique with, with the layered displacement technique. So we have the underlying displacement from ZBrush and now we can fine tune the amount of our displacement that we bring, bring in here into into our shader with, which has more details this is still too strong let's go for something like that that's a value i found works for that now it already looks way cooler as you can see this is already dope uh, curtis did a really nice job here but we, we can push it further so now we have already some some skin displacement action going on here and the green is actually even more high fidelity Let's enable that. And here, here again, default is one and it's on over, which is wrong. So we can dial it back. So we can say, hey, maybe I want to have this a bit stronger. Let's go for something like that. Yeah, it's probably a bit too strong, I guess. Okay, let's let's dial it back. Let's go maybe for something like that. 
that actually doesn't look too bad. Maybe it's a bit on the stronger side, but for the demonstration purpose, I think it's just fine. And we have a third one. This one is usually when you work with Textron XYZ textures, the high, 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 high frequency details of the skin. And you really don't want to have them too strong because then it, it will also have a huge impact on the, on the roughness, per, the, the way you perceive the roughness of the skin and everything. So this is, as a general trip, keep, keep it a bit on the lower side, but try, try out values you, you like. Like I always say in my tutorials, try out things and make your own experience out of it. As you can see, it already starts looking super rough because it's such a high fidelity texture where you have tiny, tiny dots breaking up here, the silhouette of our mesh. And that's the cool thing. Now you can fine tune, you can really do look development here with that technique. And that's actually also how we do it in production. So it's, it's really to have the control over everything on every point. And when you're under it with your, with your setup, you can really say, okay, yeah, maybe it's, maybe the, 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 the pores are a bit too strong. Then you don't have to go back to Mar, your Substance Painter, dial it back, um, export it again, bring it here into, into Maya again on your render engine, then render it again just to see, oh, now it's not balanced anymore to the fine details. Go back again to your text texturing tool, dial it in again. So here it's really just, we can do it on the fly as we, as we need. And that's actually the key of this technique, why we're doing that. And we are smart by channel packing them into RGBA because if you extract them, they're just grayscale. They're not green or blue or <laughs> whatever, um, they're just grayscale. And that's, that's cool. And yeah, that's actually everything I wanted to show you guys. And I really hope this will push your work further. And if you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments. And where you want to reach out to me, it's also possible Instagram, wherever you find my name. So yeah, happy rendering, happy texturing, and we'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye-bye, guys.